Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at another buggy program called the Fire Ants. Now in order to get to our Fire Ants, there's a few documents that we need to have opened up in order to complete this assignment. One of the first things we're going to need to do is go up to My Documents and we're going to go ahead and click on our Fire Ants code tracing chart. Once you do that, it should open up a document similar to this one where you see a couple blocks of code as well as your objective and bug as well as our buggy program down below. Now we're gonna to need to go ahead and fill out what the corrected program is, any bugs that we found, as well as what the objective is. And we're gonna do that by figuring out what the outcome is for each block and whether or not it works. Once you have your code tracing chart opened up, the next step is going to be to import that FireAnt hex file into your MakeCode environment. Now in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page and you're gonna see that you have that a 14 fireantshex file. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click on the download button. And once you go ahead and download it, remember it's going to download that into your download manager under your recent files. Now, in order to get that into MakeCode, we're gonna go ahead and click on that MakeCode link and that will open up the MakeCode learning environment. From here, you're gonna to need to go ahead and click on the import button. And then you're gonna go ahead and find that FireAnt file and bring it into MakeCode. Now, once you do, you should see it located on your dashboard under my projects. And we're going to go ahead and click on that and open it up. So the first thing we want to do is just simply observe what the program does. So this is an on start. So once the program is initialized, what should happen is that on start should be triggered and therefore it should run the remaining bits of the code. However, I didn't see anything work and that may be a bug in the program or it may just be a glitch when we loaded the program in. So let's go ahead and double check. Just hit that refresh button and let's see nothing happened again so obviously there's some bugs in our program but we need to figure out what they are so the first thing we need to do is find out what the objective of this program is what is it supposed to be doing in order to do that we're going to go ahead and click on that comment box right on the on start event handler we'll expand that out a little bit and we're going to see that this tells us that the micro bit person will do a short dance on the led grid eight times and then end on the first dance move so that's gonna be our objective. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that objective. We can use our control C to highlight and copy. And then once we get into that code tracing chart, we're just gonna go ahead and double click on that blue line and use control V to go ahead and paste that in. Now, once we paste that in, we're gonna see that it gets us our objective. And now we know what the program should do. So basically what we wanna see is this guy dance and then end on the first move. So we have to figure out what is supposed to be the first move, what's supposed to be the next move, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first line of code, which is our on start event handler. Now remember that when we look at that on start event handler, what that should do is basically trigger our program to run once it is initialized. So now that we know what event handler we're using, we can go ahead and put that in. And you can see if you hover over the blocks, it should tell you what that event handler is doing. And it's telling us run the code when the program starts. So let's go up to our FireAnts code tracing. And we're going to go ahead and type that in. Runs the program when it starts. Now, we may tend to think that this isn't working because when we go ahead and initialize the program, nothing is happening it doesn't necessarily mean that the program's not being run. And we can double check that by going under that debug, under the emulator there, and that's gonna put us into our debugger window. And we can go ahead and use that snail mode there to go ahead and slow our program down. Now you can see that once the program initialized it, it already left that on start, and now it's sitting on this repeat loop. My feeling is that it's repeating for zero times, so that's why we're not really seeing anything here. So our on start is working. So we can go ahead and exit that debugger window and we're gonna go back to that code tracing chart and we're gonna go ahead and type in there, yes, it is working. Now our program still isn't working, but at least we know our event handler is. The next step is to check this repeat loop. So let's go back into make code and let's hit that little comment box again. And here we're gonna see that it's telling us that it should repeat eight times. So we're repeating it at zero times right now. So we found one of the bugs in our program. So we'll go ahead and copy that over to our code tracing chart. The repeat zero times really should be repeating the dance move eight times. And obviously that's not working. So we found our first bug that we can go and label down below. 
So what we want to put down here is what is not working. So the repeat is set for zero times when it should repeat eight times. Now we have that typed in there and we're ready to read over that. Repeat is set for zero times when it should repeat for eight times. So now we can go back to our program and correct that mistake. And then we can go ahead and see if it does what it's supposed to do. So let's change that repeat from zero over to eight. Let's see if that does anything for us. And in this case, when it is initialized, we'll go ahead and hit that play button. And we should now see something appear on the micro bit screen. Now you may think that you're done, but we have to look at what that objective is. The objective is telling us not only should it dance eight times, but it also needs to end on the first dance move. I do see some comment boxes on those show LEDs. So let's take a look at what the first one says. That's telling me that that's the first dance move. And my objective is telling me that my program should end on the first dance move, which it is not. So we do have another bug here. Well, let's go ahead and take this and we can go ahead and put that in for our show LEDs. The first dance move, it did work. We did see the first dance move. Then we have our second dance move and we can check that by hitting the comment box. It tells us that that's the second dance move. There we go. And from there we can go and type that in and we did see the second dance move. The problem that we have here is that it's just not ending on the first dance move. So we have another bug in our program that we're going to go ahead and add. So we can go ahead and say program is ending on the second dance move. And it should end on the first dance move. Now that we've identified that bug, we have to figure a way how we can actually fix that. Now, what we may think that works is just taking this show LED and duplicating it and adding it down below. But what's actually happening here is we're repeating multiple dance moves. And we can really kind of see this if we go to that debugger window and slow it down. You can see that we're doing the first dance move. Then we're doing the second dance move, the first dance move, and then we're doing the first dance move again. So we have a little bit of redundant code here where the first dance move is occurring back to back times at the end of the repeat loop and then again at the beginning. So we don't really want that to happen. We want it to basically do the first dance move, the second dance move, the first dance move, second dance move for a period of eight times and then end on the first dance move. In order to get that to happen, what we need to do is to take that show LED and instead of putting it inside the repeat loop, what we're going to want to go ahead and do is put that outside of the loop. So we can simply do that by just grabbing that block and let's put it underneath that green block. Now that we have it underneath the green block, what we should see when we run our code is it repeat for eight times. And then once it finishes that repeat loop, it should end and remain on with that first dance move. So now that you've debugged your second code, the last step is to go and take a snapshot or a screenshot of our corrected program and add that to our code tracing chart. So remember, you can simply go ahead and right click, select snapshot. From there in the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see where it says copy to clipboard and you can simply click on that. And then on your code tracing chart, you'll need to go down to the bottom and we're going to go ahead and paste that in. Now, once you have that program pasted in and everything is completed, you'll want to go ahead back into your Schoology and make sure you submit your assignment.